Good morning and welcome to the Cost of Living Crisis Tech Tips webinar. I'll be your host Adam Graham and we are Click IT. We make your IT click. Click IT specialise in managed IT support, cyber security, cloud solutions and website design. We've been working with the third sector for over 20 years using our extensive experience to deliver you the best IT services as well as consultancy at highly incentivised prices. Our belief is providing the best recognised IT services for non-profits. We understand the challenges that non-profits are facing and that's why we try and provide you with the best tailored experience for your organisation. We will help your charity cut costs when it comes to IT and create flexibility and bespoke packages. We are more than just the IT guy, we are your partners. So today's webinar is upon the cost of living crisis. In this session we'll be discussing the increased financial pressures on non-profit organisations. We'll look to explore how technology can be leveraged to reduce the cost of living and provide economic relief. Hopefully you learned something fantastic today. So hopefully many of you are already taking advantage of dedicated charity pricing, but there's lots and lots of tools and solutions out there that can be provided at non, for non-profits at discounted rates. So Microsoft 365 licensing, Adobe, Amazon Web Services, Bitdefender, G Suite, all of these can all be found on Charity Digital Exchange. Charity Digital Exchange offers a catalogue on their website featuring some fantastic products and offers for non-profits. If you're not signed up for this, I'll suggest this is the first thing that you do following today's webinar. All of these fantastic tools, softwares, and cloud solutions are available through the website at hugely discounted prices and some for completely free. Um, as I say, Amazon, Microsoft, 365 are all on there and it's uh, really easy to set up your organisation and to be using those services straight away. So please do check them out if you're not using them already. One of the major offerings is Microsoft Discounted Licensing. Microsoft offers fantastic discounts for non-profits to help them reduce costs and empower your staff. So Microsoft 365 Business Basic is a license that includes your email exchange, it includes Microsoft OneDrive, which is storing your data, Microsoft SharePoint for creating an organizational shared system, and it also includes web copies of Outlook, Word, Excel, um, as well as Microsoft Teams. And that's free for up to 300 users. Uh, Microsoft Business Premium is their top feature and top software package available for nonprofits, and that's free for up to 10 users with discounted pricing for additional licenses. That includes the desktop suite of applications, so desktop versions of Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, those kind of things, as well as Microsoft Intune and Microsoft Defender and Microsoft Defender for 365. Also, if you're looking at cloud servers and cloud services, you can look at getting a grant from Microsoft. They offer a $3,000 per year grant available for spending on your Microsoft Azure budget. So if you wanted to provide a cloud server for your Sage or accounting purposes or another line of business application, those grants are fantastic. And for smaller organizations, they can cover your entire cloud needs. All you need to do is register and confirm your organization's eligibility. All of that run is all run directly through Charity Digital Exchange as well. So you, can, you have to set up with them first and then apply for the cloud services with Microsoft. Google Workspace is another fantastic tool, um, very similar to Microsoft, the offerings, but it's the, the Google version of everything. Google Workspace is through Google directly. So you go into the Google portal and you can check, have a domain check placed on your account to see if you're eligible for the nonprofit discounts. Um, they offer Google Workspace for nonprofits completely free. Um, Google Business Standard at $3 per user per month, Business Plus at just over $5 per user per month, and the Enterprise Edition is at 70% discount for nonprofits. So it's a fantastic platform as well, it can be utilised exactly the same way. So that takes us on to reviewing our contracts. One of the things that's really important to do at the current time is to review your contracts. Hopefully a lot of you are doing this already, but these are some ways you can save some, some large cost savings uh, and make some changes. So we need to look, when we're looking to review contracts, what we're we looking for, are you paying for services that you do not use or need? So reviewing exactly what they are, making sure you understand what you've got in place and whether you are using it and needing it within the organization. Is there a way to combine certain contracts? So are you paying for your um, telephony separate from your IT or are you paying for your electricity separate from your gas? Is there a way to combine that together to save money? Are you able to fix costs for a period of time? So this is something that we started at the beginning of 2022 with our clients. We were offering all of our clients the ability to fix their current costs for two or three years. Because of rising inflation, we were looking to hopefully save them some money in the long term. And hopefully that's been a big benefit for some of them. Are you receiving the best value for money? 
So have you researched what's out there? Do you know the competition and are you paying competitive rates? Uh, what penalties have you got in place and what would happen if you needed to terminate? So making sure you have a list of all your contracts, when they expire, what the termination details are and how much they would cost you to terminate if you did have to terminate. And are you receiving dedicated non-profit pricing? You know, if you've got current suppliers in place that don't offer dedicated non-profit pricing, make sure that you, you find suppliers that are or ask your existing suppliers if you're on the best non-profit tariffs. Sometimes you'll be paying for things and you might not, they might not realise that you're a non-profit and they might offer a better package, so definitely worth looking at. Power saving. Um, we've all probably seen this in our homes, but obviously in offices this is just as uh, prevalent. The cost of electricity and gas is, is huge. Um, so one of the huge ways of saving money on cloud uh, is cloud services. So cloud services are far more efficient than any kind of on-premise servers. Obviously anything on-premise is not switched off, it's constantly running and costing you money. Consider switching to a cloud alternative to save on your office electricity bills. You should also look at power settings on your individual desktop PCs to make sure that they're being turned off when they're not being used. If you use something like Microsoft Intune, you can actually set a policy across all your devices to turn off the power after a certain period of inactivity. Um, cloud servers are a great alternative to on-premise servers. Um, so Amazon or Azure servers are available. And as I say, something like um, Microsoft SharePoint or Google Workspace can completely replace the need for a file server at all. Um, so all of those things can be available in the cloud, saving you money, saving you power. And that takes us quite on nicely to office schedules. So if you currently are utilizing hybrid working, which I imagine a lot of you are, and you only spend a few days in the office a week, try and create an office schedule so that you can close the office entirely for maybe one or two days per week. That way you'll have no one in the office saving money on electricity in terms of the PCs and, and the monitors, um, but also be able to turn off things like gas, electricity, heating, hot water, that kind of thing, so that you can really reduce those office costs. And that goes vice versa for home offices. Make sure that we're when we're working at home and we leave, we're turning off the computers and things like that, having days when you're not there at all so you can turn the heating off. Um, great way of saving money at home as well. Leasing is another idea that we can use um, to save money in the long term. Um, you wouldn't expect to pay for any other assets up front, employees. You wouldn't pay for any other cloud services for two or three or five years in advance. So why would you pay for your equipment up front? Computer leasing solutions can balance the cost with the benefits, so your investing starts delivering in line with your spending. You're going to get the use of a computer over three or five years, so why not pay for it over three or five years? Um, sometimes you can upgrade throughout the rental period, so a lot of uh, rental companies offer the ability to upgrade in the last six months or year, so you can get upgrades when you need them. And sometimes they can be very flexible if you need to change solution. Um, and the other main thing with rental agreements, again, and they're not affected by inflation. So rental payments are fixed for the full period of the agreement. So if you sign up to a rental agreement on day one, one year, two years, three years down the line, you'll have those exact same fixed costs. So again, looking at um, devices, do you need a desktop and a laptop? So obviously with hybrid working, that is the new normal. Uh, nearly all of the organizations we work with use some kind of hybrid working if they can. And I know a lot of people are going on to a single laptop device now, and that's exactly what we'd recommend. Um, people don't, you don't need to be paying for multiple devices. It's very costly to have a desktop in the office and have a laptop at home. Um, so consider switching to a single laptop and then maybe using a docking station so that, again, you can have that comfort of having a, a larger monitor, a separate a keyboard and mouse, you know, something a bit more comfortable, um, but just utilizing that one device. So you can have a laptop at home and you can maybe dock it at home or just use it as it is, and then have the laptop take it to the office and dock it in in the office. Um, you'd be saving costs on the actual device. But you also double up on, um, double up on services such as antivirus, um, things like that. Traditional phone systems. So again, a lot of people will be in long-term contracts with these, and it's definitely something that I imagine that people are looking at at the moment. But you can definitely look into moving to a VoIP platform or something like Microsoft Teams can help reduce costs. Um, with many of these platforms, you no longer need multiple lines, extensions, phone numbers, and even handsets. So significant savings can be made on software-based phone system just using a computer headset, um, and they can use your just your laptop or your desktop PC to make all of your calls. Um, and they, a lot of them have mobile phone apps as well, so you can take them on the go with you. So your users don't have to be in a fixed location to answer the phone. For instance, Teams, I can answer Teams on my mobile, or I can answer Teams on my laptop or my desktop, or just using either my mobile phone or a ha headset. 
save on those costs for you know multiple devices, hardware, software, phones. Um, and again, a lot of these communication platforms will offer exactly the same functionality as a traditional phone system. So they will offer the ability to transfer calls, have auto attendance, press one, press two, press three. All of that's still available, voicemail, um, out of hours, things like that. Uh, we use Microsoft Teams in our office and it's absolutely brilliant. And they can also then work with your work calendars, emails and much more, providing better functionality than you've already got, which is really fantastic. Free training videos and courses. So again, something that a lot of uh, people ask us about is training. Do you offer training on Microsoft? Do you offer training on websites? Do you offer training on security? And yeah, we do offer all of that. Um, and a lot of it we do offer for free. But actually, there's loads of resources available online for completely free from the best in the business, from the people who design these softwares um, and cloud solutions. So Microsoft, G Suite, um, people like WordPress, Elementor, IT Governance, Sophos, all of these providers have a huge array of training videos to help you, you know, improve on, on your knowledge and help you utilize those solutions to the best of your ability. And they're completely free. Um, there's a whole training hubs out there. YouTube is a fantastic resource as well. So do check them out and have a look because if you can improve um, your knowledge of a platform and use more of it, again, that can hopefully save you some money and cut some costs. When not to cut costs. Now, this is quite a big one. You know, we're all talking about saving money, but there are certain things we definitely should not be saving money on. And one of the things we should not be trying to cut costs on is cybersecurity. In the current landscape, cybersecurity is absolutely huge. If cyber security investments are not made, an organization is left vulnerable to a variety of cyber attacks that can cause significant damage and financial losses. The amount of money you could lose compared to what you're saving is really, really not worth the risk. Um, you can get disrupting op operations, losing customer data, um, ruining your reputation as an organization um, if you're trying to cut costs in the wrong places on cyber security. So it's definitely something we would avoid. Um, you really should be investing. That's the one of the places you should be investing right now is a strong cyber security infrastructure and make sure your practices are crucial to preventing attacks and costs because the cost can much greater outweigh um, a cyber security attack versus the, the prevention Definitely somewhere where we would not cut costs. Another way, not, another place we would recommend not cutting costs is your user devices. Choosing a lower spec device will generally cost more in the long term. Um, with the cost of setting up a device is obviously significant. Looking at shorter device life cycles, um, having employees wasting time in their daily jobs trying to wait on their device if it's too slow, causing frustration, delays. Um, again, a life cycle of a, of a lower spec device will only be sort of maybe one or two years rather than a three to five year life cycle of a higher spec device. And again, maybe looking at which employees need lower and higher spec devices. So you might have people that are on the road, so they only need to access email or various websites. So they might be able to have a smaller, lower end device. Um, whereas your finance people or the people running your office and administration may need higher spec devices. So make sure you're considering if the tools are fit for purpose. But definitely not somewhere we should be cutting costs because I think it can really cost you more in the long term. So that takes us to the end of the, um, the webinar. and uh, We will be doing a Q&A. Uh, there are lots of ways your organization can you cut your technology costs and help budgeting during the cost of living crisis. So please remember some of the ways we can cut costs. Discounted tools for the third sector energy saving, reviewing contracts and fixing costs, utilizing cloud solutions, free training resources, and looking at smart procurement and leasing. Um, if you want to wear anything we've discussed today, as I say, we have got a and a after this, but you can also book yourself a free consultation with one of myself or one of my team. Um, and it's completely free for organizations attending today's webinar, and we'll provide you information and advice on your current setup bespoke to you, and provide you with a report on how we can best look at cutting your costs and saving you money. So there'll be a link in the chat to book your consultation. So thank you for listening and I'll head over to the Q&A. Thank you.